I had uh, just come up to uh, get my camera because I wanted to show all of you down underneath the house. Let me just uh, get this shoe in order, my insert. Oh, that. I just wanted to show all of you. It is spring. The excess of butterflies. We have here, probably just saw one just passed by, in San Clemente this time of year. So, there are several, they are all monarchs. I don't even know if I'm getting them, to tell you the truth. But, uh, yeah, they're all coming out of the bush and uh, fluttering on paths. Like I said, I have no idea whether I'm getting any of this or not. So you have to let me know. So it's springtime and uh, they're just all pushing by. I think you maybe saw the shadow of one. I mean, really, they're just coming. They won't stop coming, it seems. I mean, Jesus. They're everywhere. But yeah, there was a... Uh, I have a particular attachment to uh, monarch butterflies, even though they are poisonous. That is... Uh, when I first came to this house, uh, back in... 2003, was it? One of those. When I first came to this house, uh, and it was spring and such, I spent some time down in this area, which is actually the storm drain, but it's admittedly too big to, uh, you know, oh, I think you just saw a clear view of one. It's admittedly too big for uh, really any type of, yeah, look at them, there's three of them just fluttered on by. Uh, it was it, the storm is really too big, really, to accommodate that much water. It doesn't really, it only has like a little trickle every once in a while, and there's actually enough space to walk. So I come down here often, still do, to clear my head and such. And I, there was this one day, I believe it was spring, that uh, you know there were monarchs everywhere. Uh, you know it was the monarch season. And, you know, they were slowly fluttering by like this. And, uh, all of a sudden, within like, I don't know, look at maybe that family. I don't know if you see that family there, but, who? <sighs> you know, about ten minutes into my, uh, getting, uh, situated down here, a whole swarm of them, almost like an orange cloud of sulfur, or ether, or whatever, came gliding by through the landscape slowly. And if I remember, I think there was even this droning sound, almost kind of like a swarm of bees, except they were butterflies. And really, it just sort of was a very unusual display. I had no idea what to think of it. And, uh, it seems to be happening again, really. And there's one there, uh, I don't know if you can even see it. It's that thing moving in the bush, feasting on, uh, something or other, pollen, likely. From these honeysuckle, uh, there are many here, you can see, they're the, uh, red plants, or red flowers that are in the surrounding area, and they're just heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps of uh, monarch, but then there's even a hummingbird. I don't know if you saw that, but there was a hummingbird right there. There are just heaps of them, of these monarchs, just making their way over, and there's the hummingbird right there, making their way over to the feeding grounds, which are here, and Yeah, I thought I'd just show you this, show you one of the many, or one of the few uh, ill-observed marvels of this sequestered little town. 
um, of Southern California. Look, there's one. Oh, jeez, I just startled that. And uh, I'm going to keep going for this uh, just to see how many we can find. How many will be about? Look, there's just hundreds of them. I can't even keep track of how many are coming. I'm sure there won't be a big old cloud of them, like there was when I was, what, three or something. But, uh, man, and the birds are out chirping and such, and all in all, there's no cicadas. I hate cicadas. If there's one thing that drives me mad, it's the cicadas in the summer, and they're very ear-piercing reptilian trill that sounds off every five seconds consecutively uh, and they're silent no not sound they're unseen in the bushes here and yet they're so uh, bloody loud that uh, and it's so hot in the summer that uh, Really, if you have the window open, you hear nothing but cicadas. You want to shut the window and, I suppose, marinate in your own perspiration just to get away from the, uh, the entomological madness, shall I say. There's just, they're everywhere, guys, I tell you. Really, this is a sight to behold, I think. And uh, they're going to keep coming, and they won't stop coming, because they've got a... I forget the other lyrics to that stupid Shrek song. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're just, they're, they're, they're persistent, they really are. And, uh, so yeah, in the springtime, and also there's the honeybees too, if you can see one just maybe, yeah, fluttering, just m mincing about there on the honeysuckle. There's just a whole lot here to take in. And I know this is rambling, but I just want to show you the sheer immensity of these gatherings of the monarch in San Clemente. It's just absolutely sublime, I think. You know, they're all in three, they're all in twos or threes or fours or even ones even. And you know, they're just relentless, really. Just fluttering away. I actually, uh, it's a local, uh, well not local, but it's a familial superstition in my family that uh, if, the, if you happen to see the presence of uh, butterflies, whatever type of butterflies that might be, uh, whether you're feeling down or whatever, that uh, tends to be your dead ancestors. Uh, there's a lot of hummingbirds there too. Don't know if you can. I mean, Jesus, they're just everywhere. That's basically, as I was saying, those uh, butterflies that are fluttering about are your dead ancestors checking in on you, giving you good vibes. Hummingbird. And I, for one, since I am actually a rational, sane, uh, sensible atheist, uh, do not believe in that whatsoever. There's something down here in the bush. Don't know what, but this is really kind of a rambling video. Longer than it should be, I think. This is just beautiful. I, I love it when it's like this here, though I really don't like this uh, town too much. And obviously the flowers, uh, have started blooming anew amid the ice plants and uh, you've got this uh, weeds here, these tall grasses because we have a lot of rain you've obviously seen from Hurricane Miles 
uh, you know, those two videos, we've had an excess amount of rain throughout the month of February, and now in March it's uh, sort of calmed down a bit, and now what we have is butterflies and flowers and everything is all wonderful, and the ocean is a very, very placid shade of blue. And everything is just marvelous. This video is getting over 10 minutes long. I really need to shut this off, but uh, I kind of like it, you know. It's kind of, I, I mean, I, I want to get them all. There's one that just passed by. I want to get all of them, and I know I won't be able to, but they're just <laughs> flitting from tree to tree, plant to plant, uh, location to location, and really. They won't stop coming, I swear. It's just... Oh, yes. Uh, God, I hate what's happened here. You can see that this dead tree is right here with just a few dry remnants of sap clinging to its epidermis. I hate what's happened here. You see, um, we have new neighbors. Uh, because for several years uh, we used to have this one neighbor who always had me swim in his pool and such and uh, you know we were very good friends that neighbor eventually passed uh, about five or six years ago and with uh, the house had to be sold so they sold the house and uh, you know the neighbor really didn't uh, mind the landscape and all the wonderful vegetation and such uh, so really I had a lot of stuff to romp around in and this this uh, dead stump used to be a massive uh, sap tree with uh, you know red, yellow, green and all types of other manner of leaves and such and when you broke the uh, the stalks of them dripped with this white flocculent sap and it was really you had no idea whether it was poisonous or not it was really kind of there's a whole smattering of butterflies there it was really something but uh, since we live by the ocean uh, the new neighbors decided that it obstructed their view and they fell it they fell the bloody tree and now you could see that this bark here is pretty much just dead inside. It's not growing anytime soon. I hate it. You can see there just dead bark. And uh, it's just. It's sad. It really is. It was almost like a jungle out here that I could play in. But. That's no longer, unfortunately. And the pool, too, was filled up with uh, their rock garden because it had a hole in it during the last few years that our neighbor was on Earth and uh, it was never mended. And just once again, more butterflies and... Uh, um, you know, they just decided rather than putting in the money to fix it, which is, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars, why not fill it up and then put in a fatuous little rock garden instead? And no, I don't res really respect these new neighbors much at all uh, for that. This right here, I believe, is mustard plant. Uh, yes, that's right, mustard that uh, used to, uh, you know, that you use on hot dogs and stuff. This is the plant from which it uh, is harvested. Uh, several local history here. Um, now this video is becoming rather informative and quite long, so anyway. Uh, local history is that uh, centuries ago, when, uh, you know, Spanish uh, settlers were charting the area and such, there was this very big swath of land uh, that encased uh, San Diego, San Clemente, 
uh, San Juan Capistrano and onward. Um, and uh, the settlers really wanted, did not want to uh, lose their way uh, in this new land. So what they decided to do was to plant mustard seeds in the area so that, you know, it was kind of like breadcrumbs, a form of breadcrumbs, and you can really kind of see on that plateau there just how much mustard they did plant. It's all throughout the city, even on hills and such. This mustard is everywhere. But, uh, and if you want to know, no... I myself do not crush up the mustard, nor I don't think, nor do I think anybody does, and uses it on hot dogs or what have you. But yeah, I think uh, I'm going to shut off this video because really, there's going to be a whole, a whole ton of butterflies here, and I don't know if I'm even going to catch them all on on video. Two just flew past and almost straight into the camera. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. And, uh, spring is here. Snack and stories will be back in April or earlier, depending. I need to shoot the intro. Uh, and they're everywhere. I need to shoot the intro. So that would take, uh, quite some time. And, uh, yeah, spring's here. So that's a good thing. And, uh. You all have a good day.